We, we met in high school and we had a lot of the same classes together and we ended up going to the junior farm together. And it just turned out we were applying to the same schools and then we both got the same scholarship. Well, we ended up going to the same college. Uh, both of us ended up at UNC Greensboro. After graduation, our plans were to get a job wherever we could find a job. And we were North Carolina Teaching Fellows, which is a program by the state of North Carolina to pay for college education for, um, to, to get the best and the brightest into the classroom. And so throughout our college years, we had been touted as the best and the brightest, and superintendents from our freshman year on were handing out business cards saying, whenever you graduate, you need to come see me and I have a job for you, no questions asked. Beth was offered a number of jobs. I think she had like seven or eight job offers. The problem with social studies teachers are pretty much time a dozen um, history teachers. And so nobody really had a position for me and Harnett County ended up contacting us and they worked out so that they could create a position for Adam as well as for me. We, we didn't go into it for the money, uh, but it, it was very scary how hard it was to try and survive on what we were getting paid. But you know, one of the biggest frustrations in teaching is you know, the teacher who's next to you that's been teaching for 32 years is making twice, two and a half times what you're making even though they have no energy, they have no effort, they're really just filling space. But because it's, the pay is based on you know, tenure and it's based on experience level, uh, you know, the fact that I was a first year teacher or a third year teacher, you know, that, that part was very discouraging. And to, to know that no matter how hard I worked, I was never going to get rewarded based on that or compensated for, for those efforts. So what we're going to do is we're going to bank Beth's income just put that in the bank for four years. And then after, we'd live off of mine, and then after four years we'd have $80,000, $100,000 of cash in the bank and we can start having children, she could quit teaching. It, it became very clear very early that we weren't gonna be banking any of her salary. And we were actually going backwards on a month by month basis financially. My goal all along had been when we had children, I wanted to be able to stay home. The problem was we, we still owned, owned the townhouse. Uh, that we were living in and the townhouse we actually owed about seventy two thousand dollars on it and it was worth probably fifty and so it was basically unsellable and I didn't know that or I didn't I didn't admit it one of the two uh, so we couldn't sell it so we had two mortgage payments and I could barely afford the first one let alone the second one credit card bills were over forty thousand dollars and we were just going backwards fast and you know I, I felt like I had a plastic bag over my Pit. I, I just, I couldn't breathe. That was a really hard time in our life. Um, I remember the night Adam sat down, he, um, he was on the sofa and he was watching TV and he, he turned the TV off and he didn't move and I was laying beside him and he didn't move and normally the TV doesn't go off whenever he's been watching it until he's ready to go to bed. Um, and then he's like, we need to talk. I just didn't want to believe that we had to call it all a loss. We spent Christmas with best parents like we always do. We weren't getting anybody any presents. We had put together a few dollars to get, to get the kids something, but I wasn't getting Beth anything. Beth wasn't getting me anything. We weren't getting parents anything. It was over that time, that holiday, that I sat down with Beth's parents and sitting, sitting on their couch in their bed. And you know, I, I just had to look my father-in-law in the eye, tell him exactly what our financial situation was. And say, we don't have any other choices at this. We, we got to And he was like, and, and basically I had to tell him, I have completely failed to take care of your daughter like I promised I would. But my mom pulls me aside and she goes, the one thing I have to know is are you and Adam okay? And I said, you know, mom, with complete assurance, I can tell you Adam and I are 100% okay. We were in this together. We had gotten into the debt together. We were going to get out of it together. He said, We've, something's got to give, and this is my plan to get us out of it. Andy had been doing insurance for a few months up to that point, and he told me to go ahead and get my license. Uh, we had been doing business previously together. Not successfully, but we had always had a good time, and we, we thought we'd be successful. And so he started doing some insurance work. He got his license, told me to get mine. Uh, I put him for a leave of absence. I didn't burn my bridge, uh, which probably wasn't the smart thing to do. Maybe if I had burned my bridge, things would have happened quicker. I needed to let my principal know by April whether I was going to want my position back or not. And so I 
I had the conversation with Beth and I said, you know, we have 90 days. 90 days to make something happen, 90 days to make a decision. It was January. We had January, February, March, and then April. I had to let them know. So I was going to focus on it, do everything I could, you know, focus on the, the activity, focus on the, the phone calls, focus on what I could control. And uh, we were going to see if this would work or not. And I picked up about $12,000 in business the last two weeks of of January, 6,000, 6,000. I did about $18,000 of business in February and about $22,000 of business in March uh, of 02. And somewhere in February, early March, I got a check for $5,200. Uh, and, you know, when I got that commission check, it was like, I think we can do this. I told my principal I didn't want the job back. I actually resigned uh, from teaching, so didn't have a choice. Um, and, and focused, and I've been in full-time insurance ever since. 2003 would be the first full year, um, and in 2003 we did right at around $800,000, just a little under $800,000 of annual premium. In 2004, we jumped up, the agency went from $800,000 to $1.8 million in production, and my income followed suit. We went from about $160,000 to just over $300,000, and it's like, wow. This is real money. <laughs> uh, you know, th this is this is uh, more than you can spend type money. You know, we were actually starting to invest in things, plan for our retirement. You know, put some college programs together for the kids, and it was like, wow, we're we're grown ups. <laughs> we're actually taking care of our responsibilities all of a sudden. You know, without this business, it, we wouldn't have anything. Uh, you know, I'd still be teaching. Um, you know, it, there, there's a big difference between just being in insurance and owning your own business. And there's a big difference between being with a, with a, a vehicle that can take you to the next level. NAA is systematized to the point that it can take you to whatever level you want to make. If you want to make $500 a month part-time income, we can help you do that. If you want to make $5,000 a month, income. We can show you how to do that. If you want to make $50,000 a month income, we can show you how to do that because we have so many people doing it. Uh, you know, when you, have, when you have people making seven-figure incomes, it becomes believable. And show me another industry where you have so many people making six major six-figure incomes, seven-figure incomes that, uh, you know, have done it in such a short period of time and are bringing people behind them doing the same thing. My favorite part about the job, it, it's, it truly is knowing that I'm making a difference in other people's lives. NAA is the perfect example of if you help enough other people get what they want, then you will get what you want. And it can't be about my goals and it can't be about what I want to accomplish. It has to be about what that new agent wants to accomplish. And if I can help that new agent accomplish their goals, no matter what the goal is, whether it's a small goal or a big goal, if I help them accomplish that goal, then I know that you know, I'll, I'll get the reward. So seeing people's lifestyles change is very gratifying. You know, what I'm most proud of about the $6 million of, of business we did in 2006 was this. That represents about 6,300 families that are better off today because we were in business. It's a very gratifying business to be in. It's being able to spend quality time as well as quantity time with the kids. Yeah, it, it's being the only dad on field trips that I've been many years uh, over, the, over the past because I have the flexibility to, to set my calendar. To be at home and, and know that it's okay to take the kids out to McDonald's and get some lunch sometime and, and not have to worry about that, that, that is an amazing freedom. Sarah is nine. Uh, she'll be 10 in December and you know she's just a lot of fun. She is a hard worker at school, loves school. She's on the swim team and you know she just loves to laugh. Emily is my little six-year-old and she is such a sweetie pie uh, and you know just just wants to be just like her big sister. Um, but she is she is so outgoing, she's so independent and then Andrew he's my little four-year-old and he's in preschool this year. He, he just loves to have fun. Everything he does, he's looking for a laugh. We had been talking about moving back for years. There was something always about being able to move back to Wilmington where Beth was born and raised and where I grew up. And both sets of our parents are still down here. And about January of, of 07, I sat down and wrote down a list of everything that I wanted in my dream house. But then we walked into this house and it was like, this is home. It was just that, that calmness of this has everything that I wanted on my list, 
or better. NAA has just been a tremendous blessing in our life. It is that source of integrity that Andy promised me that we would find and that we would create. It is a comfort zone because it allows us to have the freedom of being in business for ourselves, but it's, we're certainly not by ourselves, and we have an incredible team of support, but it's amazing. Take a step of faith. Believe, in, believe that you are worth more than you currently have. Uh, and let NAA help you reach those goals that you have.